In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Intro e Deus et Dicio ne casa meam de gente non santa, al homine iniquo tu loso evervo e me. Quia Deus ne spodi de mia quare me rei podes et quatres teste in cededem apleget me enemicus. In me te lucem tuam et veritatem tuam ipsa me deduxerem te daduxerem te montem sanctum tuam et in tabernacula tuam. Et in triboltar de adium quatet vicat juventut Confite per tibi in cithara, Deus Deus meus quare tristis es anima mea, et quare cantor vas me. Sperandi con ebeto con ad hoc un petibare ili salutare voltas me, Deus meus. Gloria Patri, Filio et Spiritui Sancto. Sico tirat in principio et nuc et simperit in secula seculorum, Amen. Intro vivo ad altare Dei. Adium calitificat juventuti miam. Aditorium nostrum in nomine Domini. Qui peticiolum eterum. Confite per Deo. Beate Maria, Semper Virgini, Beate Michele Arcangelo, Beate Ioni Bautiste, Sanctis Apostolis Petro, Vod Palo Omnibus Sanctis, Evobis Fratres, Quia Pecavi Nimis Cugitazione Verbo et Opere, Mea Culpa, Mea Culpa, Mea Maxima Culpa, Idio Precor Beate Maria, Semper Virgini, Beate Michele Arcangelo, Beate Ioni Bautista, Sanctus Apostolos Petro, Vod Palo Omnibus Sanctus, Evobis Fratres, Orari Pro Mea Dominum Deum Nostrum. Misericate Omnibus Potens Deus et Dimitis Picatis Tuis Pudoc Adit Beta Ad Vitam Eternam Amen Confetio Potenti Beatum Semper Virgine Beatum Angelo Beatum Nero Baptisti Sancta Sapasola Spetu Et Palo Nebo Sanctis Tebi Pater Quia Picabini Miscine Codesione Verbo Et Operi Mia Culpa Mia Culpa Mia Maxima Culpa Et I Precor Beatum Semper Virgine Beatum Angelo Beatum Nero Baptistum Sancta Sapasola Spetu Et Palo Omne Sancta Pusiti Pater Orare por mea dominum Deum nostrum. Miseriatur vestri omnipotens Deus, et de misses peccatis vestris perducat vos ad vitam eternam. Amen. Indulgentiam absolutionem et remissionem peccatorum nostrum triboit nobis omnipotens, et misericors dominus. Amen. Deus tu conversus vivificabis nos. Et lips tua litabet orenti. Ostende nobis domine misericordiam tua. Et salutatum da nobis. Domine exaudia rationem mea. Et lamor mio set de venia. Dominus vos. It comes spirit to the rainbow sovereign. Venite, benedicti patris mei, percipite, regnum, alleluia, quod vobis paratum est ab origine mundi, alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Cantate Domino, Canticum Novum, Cantate Domino, Omnes Terra, Gloria Patri et Filio et Spiritui Sancto, Sicud Erat in Principio, Et nunc et Semper et in Secula, Seculorum, Amen. Venite, Benedicti, Patris Mei, Percipite Regnum, Alleluia, Quod Vobis Paratum Est ab Origine Mundi, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Kyrie Eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Christ eleison. Christ eleison. Christ eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. Gloria in excelsis Deo et in terra pax omnibus bona voluntatis. Laudamus te, benedicimus te, adoramus te, glorificamus te. Gratias agimus ti, bi propter magnum gloriam tuam. Domine Deus rex celestis, Deus pater omnipotens. Domine fili unigenite, Jesu Christe. Domine Deus agnus dei filius patris. Qui tolis peccata mundi misere revenobis. Qui tolis peccata mundi suscipe deprecationem nostram. Qui sedes ad exteram patris misere revenobis. Quoniam tu solus sanctus, tu solus dominus, tu solus altissimus, Jesu Christe, cum sancto spiritu in gloria dei patris. Amen. A dominus vobiscum. Et cum spiritu tuo. Oremus. Deus qui nos, resurrectionis dominice, anua solemnitate letificas, concedi propitius ut per temporalia festa quae agimus pervenire, ad gaudia eterna meriamur, per indem dominum nostrum, Iesum Christum filium tuum, qui tecum vivit et regniat in unitate spiritus sancti Deus, per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Lexio actuum apostolorum. In diebus illis, a periens petrus o suum dixit, viri Israelite et quitimetis deum adite, 
Deus Abraham, et Deus Isaac, et Deus Jacob, Deus Patrum Nostrorum glorificavit filium suum, Jesum, quem vos quidem tradidistis et negastis ante faciem pilati, judicante illo dimiti, vos autem sanctum et justum negastis, et petistis firum homicidam donari do vobis, autorem vero vitae interfecistis, equem Deus suscitavit a mortuis quius nos testes sumus. Et nunc fratres scio quia per ignorantiam fecistis, sicque de principes vestri, Deus autem quae prenunciavit per os omnium profetarum, pati Christum suum, sic implevit, penitemini igitur et convertimini, ut deleantur peccata vestra. Deo gratius. Hec dies quam feci dominus exultemus et letemur in ea, dextera domini feci virtutem dextera domini, exultavit me, alleluia, alleluia, surrexit dominus verre et aparuit a petro, victime pascali laudes immolent Christiani, agnus redemit oves, Christus innocens patri, reconciliavit peccatores, mors et vita duello conflixere mirando, dux vitae mortuus regnat vivus, dic nobis Maria, quid vidisti in via, sepulcrum Christi viventis, et gloriam vidi resurgentis, angelicus testes, sudarium et vestes, surrexit Christus spes mea, precedit vos in Galileam, scimus Christum surrexisse, amortuis verre, tu nobis victor vex, miserere, amen, alleluia. Dominus Fobiscum. Et cam spectatum. Sequentia Sancti Evangelii, secundum Ioanem. Gloria Tebi Domine. In illo tempore manifestavit se iterum Iesus, discipulis ad mare et te beriadas. Manifestavit autem sic, erant aut Simon Petrus, et Thomas, qui digitru didimus, et Nathanael, qui erant a cana Galileae, et filii Zebidei, et ali ex discipulis eius duo. Dicit ei Simon Petrus, vado piscari, dicunt ei, venimus et nos tecum, et exierunt et ascenderunt in navim, et ille nocte nicil prendiderunt. Mani autem facto, stetit Iesus in litore, non tamen cogniverunt discipuli quia Iesus est, dixit ergo eis Iesus, pueri numquid pulmentarium habetis, responderunt ei, non, dicit eis, Mitite in dexeram navidcii rete et in venietis. Miserant ergo et iam non valeban dilud, trahere pre multitudine piscium. Dixit ergo discipulus ille, quem diligebat Iesus Petro Dominus est. Simon Petrus cum audisset, quia Dominus est tunica succinxit se, erat enem nudus, et misit se in mare. Ali autem discipuli navigio venerunt non enem longe erant a terra, sed quasi cubiti seducentis, trahentes rete piscium, ud ergo descenderunt in terra, viderunt prunas positas, et piscem superpositum et panem dicit eis Iesus, aferte de piscibus quos prendedistis nun. Ascendit Simon Petrus et traxit rete in terram plenum armagnis piscibus centum quinquagenta tribus, et cum tanti essent et non est scissum rete, dicit eis Iesus, venite, prandete, et nemo audebat discumbensium interrogare eum tu quis es. Scientes quia dominus est, et venit Iesus et accipit panem et dat eis et piscem similiter, Hoc iam tertio manifestatus erat est Iesus discipuli suis, cum resurrexisset amor tuis. Laus tebi Christi.
The epistle appointed to be read for Easter Wednesday is taken from the Acts of the Apostles. In those days, Peter, opening his mouth, said, Ye men of Israel, and ye that fear God, hear. The God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his son, Jesus, whom you indeed delivered up and denied before the face of Pilate. When he judged, he should be released. But you denied the Holy One and the just, and desired a murderer to be granted unto you. But the author of life you killed, whom God hath raised from the dead, of which we are witnesses. And now, brethren, I know that you did it through ignorance, as did also your rulers. But those things which God before had showed by the mouth of all the prophets that his Christ should suffer, he hath so fulfilled. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. And the Holy Gospel is taken from the Gospel according to St. John. At that time, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias, and he showed himself after this manner. There were together Simon Peter and Thomas, who was also called Didymus, and Nathanael, who was of Cana of Galilee, and two others of his disciples. Simon Peter saith to them, I go a-fishing. They say to him, We also come with thee. And they went forth, and they entered into the ship, and that night they caught nothing. But when the morning was come, Jesus stood on the shore. Yet the disciples knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus therefore said to them, Children, have you nothing to eat? They answered him, No. He, hath, he saith to them, Cast the net on the right side of the ship, and you shall find. They cast, therefore, and now they were not able to draw it for the multitude of fishes. That disciple, therefore, whom Jesus loved, saith to Peter, It is the Lord. Simon Peter, when he heard that it was the Lord, girt his coat about him, for he was naked, and cast himself into the sea. But the other disciples came in the ship, for they were not far behind from the land, but, as it were, two hundred cubits, dragging the net with, with the fishes. As soon then as they came to land, they saw hot coals lying on, uh, 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 lying, and a fish laid thereon, and bread. Jesus saith to them, Bring hither of the fishes which you have now caught. Simon Peter went up into the ship and drew the net to land, full of great fishes, one hundred and fifty-three. And although there were so many, the net was not broken. Jesus saith to them, Come and eat. And none of them who were at meat durst ask him, Who art thou? Knowing that it was the Lord, and Jesus cometh, and taketh the bread, and giveth them, and fish in like manner. This is now the third time that Jesus was manifested to his disciples after he was risen from the dead. Thus far the words of today's Holy Gospel. And so, my dear friends, um, today's gospel um, presents two obvious points for consideration. The um, first point is treated of by Pope St. Gregory the Great in his commentary on this gospel today uh, in today's Matins readings. And it goes something like this. Dearly beloved brethren, the portion of the Holy Gospel which hath but now been read in your ears knocketh loudly at the door of your heart with certain questions, the answer whereto calleth for thought. This same question is, wherefore did Peter, who had before his conversion been a fisherman, wherefore did he, after his conversion, go again a fishing? Since truth himself, that is our divine Savior, Jesus Christ, hath said, no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. The question is, why did Peter, who had been a fisherman before his conversion, return to that which he had left? Especially when truth himself again says, no man putteth, putting his hand to the plow and then looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Why did he, Peter, take up again what he had abandoned? But, the Pope St. Gregory goes on, if we, if we apply the faculty of discretion, 
The answer is more quickly seen, and it is this. If Peter's trade was sinless before his conversion, then it was no fault for him to take it up again after his conversion. And that was the commentary in this morning's Matins readings on today's Holy Gospel. Um, without uh, wishing to impugn uh, Pope St. Gregory's exegesis here, I don't think it would be improper to explore another possible explanation to all of this, but maybe at another time, if God shall grant us hereafter more time. So, turning to the second point of the consideration, what is the significance of the uh, catch of 153 great fishes, as the Gospel tells us? They, it's the only time that uh, the fishing of the apostles actually was counted, the result of that count, 153 great fishes. And the Jews, uh, St. Jerome and St. Augustine, and apparently St. John, who was, after all, himself a Jew, uh, these were all legendary in their fascination with what is called gematria. That's the Hebrew equivalent of the uh, Greek word ge geometry. And different manifestations of gematria are revealed in relating either the letters of names, the number of the letters of names, or passages from sacred scripture to their numerical uh, equivalent, what is the numerical equivalent of these names or of, of the number of words and passages of scripture. And these are explored uh, in an attempt to derive some hidden mystical significance from the name or from the passage. Or it might be used to hide the real meaning of what you said or wrote in a number, something like a, a code, a, a, an encryption of what, of what you're saying. For example, uh, St. John's apparent hiding of the bloody Roman Emperor Nero's identity in his numeric identification of uh, the Antichrist, 666. We know that very well from the Apocalypse. Or in drawing some mystical significance from a particular number or a particular series of numbers. This is done uh, by all cultures, uh, by all men. Uh, there's something mystical. There was an entire philosophy uh, and band of philosophers before the time of Christ called the Pythagoreans, whose entire philosophy was based upon numbers and their relationship. And commenting on this numerology, if you will, St. Augustine said, An ignorance of numbers is the reason why many things expressed figuratively and mystically in the scriptures are not understood. And so, considering what he says here, St. Augustine used numbers frequently in his sermons to the faithful, not to hide things like St. John did in his cryptic use of the number 666, but he did so to give the faithful an easy way to grasp and to understand Scripture's um, uh, fuller meaning. In fact, he comments, St. Augustine does, on this very passage of Scripture uh, in, in, our, in our gospel today, he says, St. Augustine says, the number of fish caught by Peter, St. Peter, 153, obviously carries some significance. This is Saint, these are St. Augustine's words. Because it's so specific and because Christ told his apostles to cast their nets on the right side. End of the quotation from St. Augustine. He goes on, St. Augustine goes on, our Lord didn't say anything like that the previous time he directed their fishing. That was in St. Luke's Gospel. He'd already told them that he intended them to be fishers of men. And he described the last judgment in terms of taking the creatures, uh, the humans on his right, uh, to, to heaven. And so the, so the fish, he goes on in St. John, uh, today's Gospel, the chapter 21, says St. Augustine, these fish refer to people and the number signifies thousands and thousands who would be admitted into the kingdom of heaven. He says thousands and thousands, not millions and millions. Before St. Augustine, St. Jerome had already commented that he had learned from Greek zoologists that there were 150. 
53 known, known species of fishes at that time. And so the catch then, St. Jerome uh, said 153, 153 fish, taken with our Lord's words that the apostles would be fishers of men. This represents the apostolic work of bringing the gospel to the entire world, to all the nations, to all species of men, if you will. St. Augustine later, after St. Jerome, he uh, develops this further. He says, quote, you begin with the number of the law, the number 10, for the 10 commandments. But, as our Lord had said, since the letter kills, it's the Spirit that gives life. So the Holy Spirit must be added to the law. And what is the number of the Spirit, St. Augustine asks? Because the Spirit's work is one of sanctification, and since God sanctified the seventh day of creation, the number seven has always been appropriately attached to the Holy Ghost. He goes on, St. Augustine, he says, Likewise, Isaiah speaks of the seven gifts of the Holy Ghost. So the association of seven to the Spirit is, is reinforced. We add uh, the Spirit then to the law. This is St. Augustine. We add the Spirit to the law. We add seven for the Spirit plus ten for the Ten Commandments, and we get seventeen. We get the seventeen, ten and seventeen, ten and seven, seventeen. And he then, he then asks, St. Augustine asks, what does 17 have to do with 153 fish? He answers, if you add the individual numbers together from 1 to 17, guess what? The sum is 153. And so he concludes, St. Augustine concludes, uh, he's addressing his, uh, his larger audience than uh, perhaps we have here in our chapel. He concludes, 153 then represents all of those who are converted through the apostolic fishing and who share in the life of grace, represented by seven, by which they are enabled to keep the law, which is represented by the number 10. And uh, at the end of all of this discourse, St. Augustine, noticing that everybody was scribbling furiously on their Sunday bulletins, I guess, uh, says, there's no point in doing this little exercise here and now. When you go home, you can add them up yourself and you'll see what I mean. And that was St. Augustine's commentary. We have to keep in mind that in the time of St. Augustine, the Holy Rosary did not yet exist. It had not yet, St. Dominic had not come on the scene, and Our Lady had not yet given him the Holy Rosary. So, it's left to us to finish this mystical gematria of 153 fishes caught in a net that didn't break. And it goes something like this. This passage quoted from uh, today's Gospel, the 21st chapter of St. John, can be taken as a prophecy of the Rosary, the Holy Rosary, which, uh, like St. Peter's unbreakable net, will catch and draw, the Rosary will catch and draw into heaven all of Our Lady's predestinated souls. So if you, if you look at a rosary, I happen to have one handy here, um, most of our rosaries, all of our rosaries that we're, we're familiar with, the ones that the, the Dominicans wear are um, more complete, and, uh, but our rosaries are uh, generally made up of only uh, five decades of, uh, of beads. And uh, so it's only one-third of the whole. The whole rosary is, this is only one-third of the of the whole rosary as it was given by um, Our Lady to St. Dominic and the again the Dominicans wear the whole thing uh, all, all 15 decades and you can see that uh, each decade has only only 10 beads, that's why it's called the, that's why it's called the decade it's just got 10 beads and of course the beads in between each decade for the, uh, for the Our Father um, so when Our Lady first appeared uh, in Fatima um, in the very month named for her, the month of, of May, on May 13th, 1917. Uh, and then every uh, 13th day of every month thereafter, uh, through and finally appearing at last on um, October 13th, uh, 1917. If you take a calendar, any calendar, and you count from May 13th to October 13th, from the month of Mary 
to the month of the Holy Rosary, guess what? You find there are exactly 153 days during which Our Lady, uh, or during that, that period which Our Lady appeared every month at the same time, spanning from the month of Mary, the month of May, to the month of the Holy Rosary, uh, October. So the sum then of the days during which the six apparitions of Our Lady to the three children of Fatima took place was exactly 153, ending again in October, which even at that time, as I mentioned, had long been venerated as the uh, month of the Holy Rosary ever since, <clears throat> excuse me, ever since the victory of Lepanto in uh, 1571. And finally, some other clever fellow, uh, not me, um, uh, in counting the numbers of the, of the letters in the Latin version of the Hail Mary, the Ave Maria, you guessed it, 153 letters. So what was Our Lady's consistent counsel? What was her consistent uh, advice <clears throat> to the three children of Fatima over those 153 days of apparition to them? She said, recite the rosary every day in honor of Our Lady of the Rosary. And that was the only title by which she identified herself in those, during those 100, 153 days to the three children of Fatima. At uh, Rianjo, Spain, in August of 1931, our Lord uh, communicated to uh, Sister Lucy his unhappiness, his dissatisfaction with the popes and the Catholic bishops to that point, failure to obey his command to consecrate Russia to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Uh, our Lord said to uh, Sister Lucia, quote, Make it known to my ministers, given that they follow the example of the King of France in delaying the execution of my requests, they will follow him into misfortune. It's never too late, he goes on, to have recourse to Jesus and Mary. And then in another text, uh, Sister Lucy wrote that our Lord had complained to her, quote, they did not wish to heed my request. Like the king of France, they will repent of it. They will do it. They will do it. They will do it. But it will be late. Russia will have already spread its errors throughout the world, provoking wars and persecutions against the church. The Holy Father will have much to suffer. And the reference uh, by Jesus to the king of France's disobedience and uh, his punishment actually played out as follows. Uh, on June 17th, there we are with uh, another significant date. On June 17th, uh, 1689, 1689, was when the Sacred Heart of Jesus appeared to St. Margaret Mary Alacoque and, uh, and, and conveyed or, or, or transmitted to her the urgent appeal that she was to pass on to the King of France that he was to consecrate France to the Sacred Heart. And for 100 years to the day thereafter, the kings of France, Louis XIV, through and including Louis XVI, delayed. They didn't obey. They failed to carry out the wish of Jesus' sacred heart. And finally, uh, on June 17th, 1789, 100 years to the day after Jesus' command relayed through St. Margaret Mary Alacoque, the King of France, then Louis XVI, was stripped of his legislative authority by the revolutionary Third Estate. And the month following that, in July, uh, July 14th, Bastille Day, that has always been held in history as marking the official start of the disastrous French Revolution. Four years after that, uh, the soldiers then uh, the soldiers of the revolution uh, executed King Louis XVI of France as a common criminal. And he and his predecessors, having failed to obey the, our Lord's request that their kingdom be consecrated to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. And this failure to obey our Lord brought upon France uh, the misfortune both of regicide and of apostasy uh, on the church's eldest and unfortunately now ugliest daughter. That misfortune has left France a ruined country to this day. She has never 
recovered the loss of so many thousands of her citizens who were butchered at the guillotine because simply they were Catholic. And this country has since uh, spread its disastrous principles of egalité, of liberté, or rather liberté, egalité, fraternité, throughout the whole world, throughout the whole world. These three principles from the French Revolution metastasized into the equally disastrous Bolshevik October Revolution in Russia, not two weeks following, only two weeks following the last apparition of Our Lady of Fatima to the three children in Portugal. And so the, the Russian Revolution, uh, which killed their uh, Tsar and Tsarina, uh, and ushered in that horrible period of, uh, of communism into Russia, began two weeks after the last apparition of Our Lady of Fatima to the three children. And this revolution, uh, this Bolshevik revolution, of course, metastasized uh, to China and to uh, Eastern Europe, all of countries which were, uh, which were gathered into the uh, Soviet bloc, uh, the Soviet Union. And finally, the same three principles of the French Revolution, which have caused such disaster in that country and throughout the entire world, uh, metastasized into the even more disastrous principles of the Second Vatican Council. Religious liberty, liberté, ecumenism, égalité, and collegiality, fraternité. An event, the Second Vatican Council, occurring apparently coincidentally, began not coincidentally really, in the month of October, the month of the Holy Rosary once again of 1962, and uh, apparently prophesied in the still, still unreleased to this day, uh, Third Secret of Fatima. And now, after another centenary, another consecration requested by God's own Blessed Mother, the solemn consecration uh, of Russia to her Immaculate Heart, still to this day, to this very day, has not been performed. And we now stand on the eve of the fulfillment of these prophecies made by uh, Our Lady of, of Fatima, namely, uh, that the, the Pope and the bishops will suffer a fate like the last king of France and his unfortunate country if they continue to delay the fulfillment of the request of God's Holy Mother. And indeed, looking at our circumstances today, it, I don't think is unreasonably asked if perhaps this present worldwide lockdown of the world's citizens may not be the beginning of the fulfillment of these prophecies because of a command of Our Lady and Our Lord not fulfilled. In the incomplete version or vision uh, of the third secret of Fatima, which uh, was released by the Vatican on uh, June 26, 2000, the uh, popes and bishops were shown the results of ignoring our Lord's requests. The vision, this is only part of that uh, famous third secret. It's not the whole third secret. The part that they released was only uh, was, the, was the visible part. It was not the whole third secret. But the, one, the part that was release, released depicts a bishop, he said, a bishop dressed in white who is shot and killed by a band of soldiers while he's kneeling at the foot of a large wooden cross atop a hill, having traversed a half-ruined city, Rome, filled with corpses. The execution of the bishop dressed in white is then followed by the execution of many bishops, priests, and laity. Well, there are two candidates, two bishops currently living in Rome dressed in white. Uh, one used to be Pope, and the other is now the Pope. And this prophetic vision, uh, as part of the third apparition uh, given to the children of Fatima, I think should serve as a warning to those who persist in delaying the requests of God. For our Lord warned Sister Lucy that if the bishops continue to refuse to do what he says to do, they will follow him. The assassinated King Louis XVI of France into misfortune. Those are our Lord's words. And so, um, a couple of things. Um, 
we, I think during this time, it would be very well, as I've mentioned, I think, uh, in another uh, talk to you, that we pray our rosary at least the, uh, the one-third of it that we're used to praying every day. Every day. That should be the case even uh, in, uh, in times of peace and, and prosperity, which these times are not right now. We should pray our rosary every day. There's no excuse for not praying the rosary every day. We can certainly find 15 minutes out of our time of each day of 24 hours to pray at least that much. And now that we, many of us, have not as much to do because we're kept at home, um, we could do the entire 15 decades. Uh, could do five in the morning, five at noon, and five in the, uh, in the evening uh, in fulfillment of Our Lady of Fatima's um, message to the three children. And so consider that carefully that these, again, I've said before, uh, not me, uh, popes and saints before me have said that after the Mass, the rosary is the most powerful weapon against the devil. Pray the rosary, pray the rosary. If you do not pray the rosary, then how will you fight the devil? It's given to us to fight the devil. It's given to us to draw closer to Our Lady and consequently to her son, Jesus Christ. And so we pray, O most glorious Lady of Fatima, O Queen of the Most Holy Rosary, pray please and intercede for us that we be faithful to your command to pray your Holy Rosary every day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. <clears throat>
Orate fratres, omnipotente. Sa sapiata mo na sa kapisyam na ima na vistuvis at laodem gloriam na minini suwi. Adyala tatin kong kainostram tuto si eklise suwi sangti. Per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Dominus fobiscum. Et cum spiritu tu. Sursum corda. Habimus a dominum. Ratius a gamus domino Deo nostro. Denium et justum est. Pere dignum et justum est. Equum et salutare te quidem domine omni tempore. Sed in hac potissimum die. Ho gloriosius predicare. Cum pasca nostrum immolatus est Christus. Ipse enum verus est agnus, qui abstulit peccata mundi, qui mortem nostra moriendo destruxit et vitam resurgendo reparavit et idio cum angelis et archangelis cum tronis et dominationibus, cum quae omni militia celestis exercitus, hymnum gloriae tue canimus sine fine dicentes, sanctus, 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 dominus Deus salva ot, plenis in celi et terra gloria tua, Hosanna in excelsis, benedictus qui vened in nomine Domini, Hosanna in excelsis.
Amen. O Rebus Precepti Salutaribus Nomiti, et Divina Institutione Formatia de Mestitur, Pater Noster, qui est in Celis Sanctifice Genomen Tuum, Advenia Regnum Tuum, Dietro in Plasticum, Sicut in Celo et in Terra, Panem Nostrum Quotidiano da Nibus Fudine, Et Dimitri Nobis Divita Nostra, Sicut et Nos Dimitri Nos Divitoribus Nostris, Ne Nos in Ducas, in tentazione. Sed liberanus amado.
Kreislauf in diesem Kultur. Per omnia secula seculorum. Amen. Pax et omni sit semper obiscum. Et cam spiritu tu. Agnus Dei, ich bitte uns wie Katharina, wie sehr wir haben. Agnus Dei, ich bitte uns wie Katharina, wie sehr wir haben. Agnus Dei, ich bitte uns wie Katharina, Confessione potente, beata me sempre, Virgine, beata me, beata me, Michele. Confessione potente, beata me sempre, Virgine, beata me, Michele. Angelo, beata me, Baptisti, Santa, Sapposolo, Spetto, e Padone, Bo, Santa, Stevia, Pater. Qui è picca, bene, mi scrive, rascione, bello, e opere. Mia culpa, mia culpa, mia maxima culpa. E replica, beata me sempre, Virgine, beata me, Angelo, beata me, Michele, Baptista, Santa, Sapposolo, Spetto, e Padone, Santo, Sete, Pater. Orare per me, Dominum Deum Nostrum. Miseria Altra Vestri Omnipotens Deus et Demisus Peccatus Vestris Perducat Vos Ad Vitam Eternam. Amen. Indulgentiam Absolutionum et Remissionum Pictorum Vestrum Trigo et Pobis Omnipotens et Misericors Dominus. Amen. Ecce agnus Dei, ecce qui tovit peccata mundi, et Domine non sum dignus ed interessum tectum meum, sed tantum vic verbo et sanabitur animum mea, 
Domine non sum digno sed intra sed dectum meum, sed tantum de verbo et sed abitur anima meum. Domine non sum digno sed intra sed dectum meum, sed tantum de verbo et sed abitur anima meum. Corpus Domine nostri. Vitam eternam. Amen. Resort in his ex mortem, ex mortem, is young non mortitur alleluia, morsili ultra non dominabitur alleluia, alleluia. A dominus fobisco. Et cum spirita tu. Oremus. Ab omni nos quesimus domine de tu state purgatus. Sacramenti tui veneranda percepcio in novam transferat creaturam, qui vivis et regnas cum Deo Patre, in unitate Spiritus Sancti Deus, per omnia secula seculor. Amen. Dominus Opiscum. Et cum spirita tu. Ite, visa es. Dio gratius. Benedicat vos omnipotens Deus. Pater filius et spiritus sanctus. Amen. Dominus Opiscum. Et cum spirita tu. Et cum spirita tu. Gloria a tebi, Domini. In principio et verbo. Et verbum erat apud Deum, et Deus servat verbum hoc erat in principio apud Deum. Omni per ipsum factus sunt et sine ipsum factum est nicio quod factum est. In ipsum vita erat, et vita erat lux hominum, et lux in tenebris lucet, et tenebris eum non comprehenderum. Quid homo misus a Deo cui nomen erat Ioannes hic, vene de testimonium et testimonium per liberat de lumine, ut omnes creator et per illum, non erat ille luxit et testimonium per liberat de lumine, Erat lux vera quae luminat omnem hominem venientem in hunc mundum. In mundo erat et mundus pripsum factus est, et mundus eum non cuniovit in propria venit et sui eum non reciperum. 
corpul alto, which apparently in data days put the start of videos that he appeared. He is quick credit to nominate his queen and next son when he was neck wakes one tati, carnies neck wakes one tati, really sad ex deo nati, so into fair from Carl Falcon Aston, Hobby Tata de Novi, said P. Miss Hori and Mayor's Corey and Quarty, Unigenity, a Patrick, Lenin Grazie, Epitatis. Deo Gracias. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy. Hail our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry for the children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs of mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us. And after this, our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. That we may be with forty the promises of Christ. And let us pray, O God, our refuge and our strength, look down with favor upon thy people who cry to thee. And through the intercession of the glorious and immaculate Virgin Mary, Mother of God, of blessed Joseph, her spouse, of thy blessed apostles Peter and Paul, and of all thy saints, do thou mercifully and graciously hear the prayers which we pour forth for the conversion of sinners and for the freedom and exaltation of Holy Mother Church through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy Michael, Archangel, defend us in this day of battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast down to hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. O most sacred heart of Jesus. Have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus. Have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus. Have mercy on us.